Well, welcome. In this video lecture, we are looking at the book Think Python, How to Think Like a Computer Scientist. We're looking at the second edition. The authors are Alan, Jeffrey, and Chris. I'm going to be doing video lectures. My name is Arthur Solomon. I'm going to be working with you throughout these videos. Thank you. Well, welcome. In this chapter, we are looking at functions. So the objectives are to examine the role of arguments and parameters and functions. We're going to be creating a Python function that takes arguments, and we're going to choose Python programs using nested function options. So first of all, a common function that we've seen are things like type, uh, type 42, that should, uh, should respond with a class int. Type is the function. So functions can take an argument, and it can also pass to a function, and it can also return a result. It is common to say that functions take the argument returns a value. The results can also be a returned value as well. So for example, let's go ahead and open up our Python. I want to go ahead and get this pin to start. We can do things like type 42. It will let us know that is an integer. If we do type 3.9, it should let us know that it's a float. If we do integer hello, it should give us an error because the function integer is expecting a uh, numeric value and that's a character value so that doesn't quite work. You have to enter a extra line. The last line has to be a blank line. And you'll notice from there, it actually finishes the function. What we can do to verify this is we can print our function. Print, print lyrics. 
and the function print lyrics is at that location. The problem is we don't want the location, we want it to type it out. So we want to type our function. And the type will actually list it as a function. So how do we call it? Well, we have to treat it like anything else. We don't need a print in front of it because this will act like a call. The print statements are already in the function. But you have to make sure, I got ahead of myself, to do the two uh, parentheses at the end. And that will actually call the function. The argument goes inside the parentheses. Even if there's no argument, you have to make sure to include them. And the nice thing is, we can do nested programs. So our book brought up the ability to print additional repetitive lyrics. So we're going to set up a new function. We're going to call this repeat lyrics. We want it to repeat the lyrics twice. Nope, not, what, not quite what I wanted. It did not like that at all. So I'm going to go back. There we go, print lyrics. Then I want to print lyrics again. And then have a blank line at the end. So now what we can do is if we call repeat lyrics, it should call the function print lyrics. It will print these two lines. Then it will print print lyrics again. It will call those two lines again. So repeat lyrics. There it is. So we can start nesting our functions. If we decided to declare a new uh, function, we could do that as well. So I'm going to make a new one that is not in the book. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do, I'm going to define lyrics to. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to modify this a little bit. Instead of saying I am, you are I'm going to go ahead and just modify it. We sleep all night and we work all day. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new function. So now what I want to do is I actually want to modify my function. I actually want it to call the original message, the original lyrics, the new lyrics, the original lyrics, and then the new lyrics again. So print lyrics, lyrics two, print lyrics, lyrics two. So now let's go ahead and let's call our repeat lyrics. Here's the original. Here is the new, here's the original, here is the new. So that's an example of us nesting those functions. So definition and use, again, as we start using our functions, we want to start being able to understand what they're doing. More importantly, we also want to start documenting how these functions work. You can combine the functions to string together those function uh, commands. So the flow of execution is actually really important. How do we know 
how what the flow is. Normally, we always want to define our functions first. We do not want to alter the flow of execution of the program, but remember the statements inside the functions don't run until the functions are called. Normally, functions are defined first. From there, define the rest of the program. You got to think like functions are a call or like a detour in the flow of execution. Instead of going to the next statement from the flow, the flow will jump from where it's currently at to the function, process the function, and then it will return to that line of code. And from there, it will pick back up and keep going. That sounds pretty simple enough until you remember that one function can call another, which can call another, which can call another, but eventually, at the end, it will always end up back in the original location in the code. Parameters and arguments. This is important. Functions can use to pass arguments. Some of the functions we've seen require arguments. Some of them have not. For example, when you call math.sin, you pass a number as an argument. Some functions take more than one argument, so we can have like mathpow. That will take two numbers. Inside the function, the arguments are assigned a variable that's called a parameter, and the parameters are local to that function. They're not without the throughout the entire program. The parameters are only declared and working inside a function. Variables inside a function, they're local. So here we have an example where we can call, we have two variables going in or two arguments going into a function. Those functional or those arguments inside the function are declared, are put as a character, and then will be operating on. But again, the arguments are local. So once the argument is passed to the function, that becomes a parameter. That parameter stays inside that function. Here the variable cat is only inside the function cat twice. We can call these stacks or we can call these programs, we can call them nested uh, actions as well. So one of the things we have to realize is when we're doing this, it gets kind of complicated, so we want to be able to do what's called a stack diagram. To keep track of which variables can be used and where, it's sometimes useful to draw what's known as a stack diagram. Like a state diagram, but the stack diagram show the variables of each variable, but they also show the functions in which those variables belong to. Functions are represented by a frame, and each parameter is referred to the same value as its corresponding argument. This will list the functions to be called what's known as traceback. So we also have two specific types of functions, fruitful and void. A fruitful function typically returns a value. That normally happens when we want to do something. A void function normally does not return a value, and it typically will just display something. If a function like print twice performs an action but doesn't return anything, that's a void function. It's just printing uh, something. When you call a fruitful function, you almost always want a return result. So why functions? It allows us to group things together. It removes the ability to have continual repetitive code. It simplifies things. It divides a longer program into functions, allowing debugging to be easier. It creates more of a slim, a slim line program. And well-designed functions are often more useful for many programmers. Once you write and debug them, you can comment them and you can reuse them. Debugging, like anything else, you have to look through the error codes, define them, figure them out, and fix them. Part of what we have to do with this chapter is explore the function calls, test them, and make sure we understand the output that we're getting when we're doing invalid functions. We have a lot of glossary terms this week. 
functions, parameters, function calls, arguments, local variables, fruitful, and void functions are some of the big glossary terms. This is not an exclusive list, this is just some of the common ones. We have three exercises in this chapter, writing a function named write justified. Uh, exercise two is a function object is a value you can assign variables or pass an argument, so we're going to be dealing with functions. And exercise three is basically this exercise should be done only using the statements and other features we've learned inside this chapter so far. And they're going to provide examples of what to do. These are actually going to be really challenging exercises. I'm going to do separate videos for all three of them. Thank you. That concludes this chapter. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out and leave me a comment or a question. I'll try to get those answered as quickly as I can. Again, thank you, and I look forward to working with you in later modules.